welcome back guys Chris back at it been a bit of a delay but now we're gonna hit it hard and do some good videos for you comparing the Trek Marlin range for the entire of 2022 so pretty much all these models are 100% confirmed now based on different reports from around the world and such so I thought I'd just clarify it because you're probably pre-planning for a late season or spring of next year delivery or idea of what you're going to be riding. The bike shortage is going to continue. The Shimano factory in Malaysia just got shut down for three weeks because of COVID. And um, yeah, in this video, we're going to simply compare a brief overview of the differences between the Trek Marlin 4 all the way up to the Trek Marlin 8. All right, let's find out which one's the best value or what's worth it to you. Let's jump right to it. Trek Marlin 4. The 2022 Trek Marlin 4 is no different than the Trek Marlin 4 from last year. Makes it pretty simple. Let's move on. All right, I'm just kidding. What actually is different is nothing. The price has gone up a little bit. But what is the Trek Marlin 4 and who is it for? If you're looking at the Trek Marlin 4, it's probably entry level for you. It is something to get you going and you are a bit of a commuter, a bit of a city street kind of rider. And on top of that, you want to adventure into the off-road. So this comes with three gears on the front and seven on the back, which is a really good range, super open, super easy to find a good gear no matter what you're doing. Now, there are downsides to that. And we'll touch on that as we go up to our models. This one does not have hydraulic disc brakes and that is a big downside to the Trek Marlin 4. Keeps that price down and mechanical brakes on disc wise still work really well but it's still something you've got to be aware of. It's not, um, it's not the best system around there and that's just the easy way to say it. So the Trek Marlin 4 still shares the same frame as all the models they do make an extra, extra small this year with 26 inch wheels all the way up to 29s on the mediums and bigger and 27 and a half on the extra small and small models. The Trek Marlin 4 generally would be for someone, like I said, who is kind of doing a bit of both and I'd lean more towards the more rugged commuter. So you're cutting through the campground trails, you're going down the back lanes, you're adventuring, but you're definitely just starting your kind of entry level life into the trails. You want to see what they're like and you go adventure on them. It can do it, no problem. Obviously, you're not going to win any races on it. That's the Trek Merlin 4. It's a pretty simple bike, but it does its job good. It's aluminum frame, lightweight, pretty fast rolling with the bigger wheel sizes. Has all the kind of check boxes of a, a mountain bike, but it's still held back by the old technologies of what mountain bikes were. As soon as you jump up to the Trek Merlin 5 for 2022, you get some big changes here. All right, so first up with the Trek Marlin 5, it has gone from what was that 3x7, same as the Trek Marlin 4. This now has a 2x8 with um, much faster shifting. Honestly, if you were to ride the Trek Marlin 4 and the Trek Marlin 5 back to back, you would notice kind of the snappiness of it, how fast it kind of rolls through the gears and the efficiencies of it. It is that much nicer. As well, you are getting a manual lockout on that front fork. So unlike the Trek Marlin 4, this one you can actually turn off and uh, get your power straight through the pedals to the wheels without having any of that suspension absorb it. This is great if you're doing a big long climb, you can turn off your suspension and keep that efficiency through the bike. Um, honestly, you'll probably forget to use it most of the time, but it is a nice little feature that they have in there. The shifting is the big upgrade from this year um, or from 2021 to the 2022 model. The brakes are the same, which have been upgraded from the cable disc brakes of the Trek Marlin 4 to a hydraulic disc brake, um, which works really well, honestly. Like, yes, if you compare it to a $4,000 mountain bike, um, they're pretty entry level feeling. But for an $800 bike or just around there in Canadian dollars, it's actually a really good brake set, really fantastic. Going to the two gears on the front and the eight on the back really makes it a lot simpler of a system. It shifts really nicely, there's less complication, and it will perform better in off-road environments. So the bumpier it is, the less flex that chain's gonna have, the less looseness it's gonna have. It's not gonna flop around as much, less chance of it falling off. It's gonna shift more reliably. Plus, having more range in the back means you will be able to not need to shift those front gears as often, which is a nice upgrade. Otherwise, Pretty much all the other power specs are the same between the four and the five. 
The Trek Marlin 6, though, has had another change. So whereas the Trek Marlin 5 is essentially now the Trek Marlin 6, the Trek Marlin 6 nestles itself right in between the Marlin 7 and the Marlin 5. They did one major but minor upgrade to it. And that is changing it from that 2x8 to the 1x10 Shimano Dior system. So this is this is great. Like it, uh, it's going to shift superbly fast. It's going to work really well. It's very simple, and it's going to make it really good for adventuring in that off-road world. Commuting, sure, you lose some finer increments going to the one by, but it's not like many people care that much about it. If you're looking for the fastest commuter around, you probably shouldn't be looking at a Merlin. You should be looking at a Dual Sport or an FX or some other model. If you're just looking for a fast kind of all-around purpose bike, the Trek Merlin 6 is going to be a really good seller. It's simple with that one by. It has that same front fork as it had last year, so it's going to be still lockoutable, still pretty good performance to it. It's a coil um, spring in it, so it's not got any air or anything. They didn't upgrade it that way. Brakes are pretty good. Overall, the big change they've done between those two models is just simply the one by. And it's nice, it, it gives those people who are the rougher commuters the two by option for a good price. And for the people who are starting to adventure more or just want a really simple system, you have that choice with the um, with the one by 10 and it's a really good one by 10 system. So simple changes, but it makes up for a big amount of it. Jumping to the Trek Marlin 7, there's been pretty much no changes from what I have seen and what looks like is coming via websites which have got it released. Um, they've changed the rims, so that is really the only change. Um, you get that 1x10, you do get an upgraded RockShox uh, Judy front fork, still a coil spring, so it's going to perform really well. It, you're not going to be able to custom fit it with uh, air pressure or anything like that, but it, it works really, really well. The 1x10 is the same as the Merlin 6, so you're going to have the same shifting there, but upgrading that front fork significantly from the SR Suntour to the RockShox is going to add a lot of performance value to it. The brakes are a little bit better, and going to that tubeless ready rim means, although you'd have to buy a new set of tires because the tires are not tubeless it comes with, it gives you that opportunity to buy a bike that is ready to roll off-road, it's going to shift great, it's going to have a good performance fork, it's also going to be slightly upgradable, whereas many previous years it's not worth it really, there's not much you can do to it. This, you could get a better tire, more off-roady, bit more ta traction to it, bit more meat to it, and then also tubeless it, so you'll run those lower pressures, have less chance of flats. It's gonna make it more mountain biking, and it's done really easily. The one thing I have not confirmed yet is whether or not it can take a dropper post internally and the frame changes between it. I can't see anything that says it does, and I believe Talalapop has a good video about the Marlins, most of the time we end up just doing external posts because it's very difficult to route any other way. But with the Trek Marlin 8, everything changes. It comes stuck with a beefy tire to it. It comes tubeless ready. I think it'll come with tubes, but you can make it tubeless pretty easily. It comes with that air shock and it comes with better brakes. Like, Everything about that bike is a mountain bike. Essentially, they've taken the Excalibur, made it slightly heavier, and I don't think anyone cares. And they made it a little beefier because that's what people care about more is that mountain bike rugged look, which will do better performance than a lightweight, but like, who cares? The Trek Marlin 8 is really the ultimate beginner mountain bike if you just want to put your money down and walk away with everything you ever needed. It's going to be a fantastic bike. Air shock, so it's adjustable. Big tires on it, so it's gonna have the traction for the off-road and less about the carrying and how fast it goes in the streets. And then the brakes are gonna be nice and powerful that they're actually gonna have some stopping power to it. You will be able to ride this bike off-road and actually do a really good job with it. So I think Trek's really broadened the lineup with the Merlin series. I hope this video was kind of helpful. Subscribe and comment below if it was or if you've already got your order in. This seems like they are this is the models now and it kind of makes a nice clarification. You have the entry level commuter. It starts really simple and you can go off road with it. It can do trails, no problem. 
kind of old technologies blended with new technologies. As you go straight up to the five, you get better technologies, better for off-roading, six, better for off-roading, but still holds true to that kind of simple adventure commuter bike without killing the price too high. Then you jump into the seven and eight, where it's the, I'm gonna mountain bike, I want a trail bike, and you either buy the budget one to go, and I'm still unsure how much I like it, so I want a bike which will just perform really well around town, or you go to the Merlin 8, and you, you just generally have a trail bike. Now, this is an entry-level hardtail, which performs really, really well. All right, guys, hopefully this video helped. Like I said, subscribe, comment, like, say anything. I don't care. Hopefully we'll do more of these videos. All right, good luck.